Bonjourno, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Your resident despondos at your service. Ready to bring you some insight. And I apologize, folks, I am smoking again. I'll try to keep it short and sweet with my smoking and not do it so much. Well, got a lot of videos to do today, a lot of subjects to cover. I got haven't had this large amount of creativity coming through my head in a long time. Um, well, in lieu of, um, I had did a video a while back uh, about me watching the um, Penn and Teller's bullshit show about uh, ghost hunting, and in which that they, you know, debunked a few things that I thought held water as far as, like, techniques go, uh, but they didn't really do a very good job in explaining some of a lot of the uh, really hardcore, blatant, you know, really kind of unex not readily available information of explaining a lot of different um, uh, photo anomalies and f things caught on film. However, I did find one thing, though. Uh, evidently, my friends that I that took a photo, a couple pictures. Well, the the peep, somebody else took the pictures of them, and uh, the one picture I saw had a this cloudy mist up in the corner, quite large, in fact. Looked very, very ghostly and very, very out of place. There was not any smoke else. There wasn't any other smoke in the room except what was there on the picture. Now it was done with a flash, and you know, the, and I didn't think that you know that with smoke, smoke would have been you know readily you know visible. But I went and did some research and actually found out that even after smoke has dissipated, even for some time, especially like secondhand smoke, um, how it's being filtered through people's lungs and then exhaled, or even if it's coming in from other places in uh, the building, uh, because they said they had not been smoking, but they do smoke like chimneys most of the time, you know, so, but there's, pl it was, it's like a house, it's an old house, that has been turned into apartments, so there are other apartments, and you know it's low-income housing, so the chances of other people who do smoke in those other apartments is very high. In fact, I do knew do knew no other people that live there, and they did in fact smoked, and you know lived in like the adjacent apartment. But what happens is is that even though the smoke can dissipate, or it doesn't it's not visible to the eye. The gases of the smoke still will linger for some time. And that can be picked up by a, uh, a camera when a flash hits that cloudy mist of invisible smoke. And that's actually what that was. However, they said that they also had another photo, which I did not see, and they lost these photos um, they don't know what happened to them, but they had, they said they indicated some other type of anomaly that was in the photo that was very, 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 uh, atypical of any other type of photo anomalies to, you know, being explained. Now I have seen other photos of other pictures that have been ta taken by other people in which... And they, what they described in this other picture was like this cone. And that has been very consistent with uh, ghosts caught on camera. In fact, it's probably one of the more solid things that actually seems more like a something that is aware of something. that it's Because the way it behaves, 
it moves really quickly and it like it almost looks like it's trying to get away so it isn't caught on camera it behaves like an organism because ghosts you know if you believe in this in the essence of a person not being around after they die then they uh, you know they're just people without bodies and that can you know they they would still behave you know maybe like a person you know or even if it's not a person um it could it could be some other type of you know ethereal organism you know there's a lot of things that we're not could you know that we that we may not be aware of there may be th there probably is a lot of things that that's beyond our comprehension. You know, the possibility of those things has possibility to exist without, you know, being in plain sight like everything else. That's not a concept that is beyond beyond possibility. It's just that most of the time when people think that they're actually seeing or witnessing something like that, that there's a lot of uh, times when people will think that that's actually what's happening and it's not. Um, which bring, you know, these cones and these photos, they actually cast shadows. So it's like, what the fuck is that, you know? I mean, and it could, now I'll have to do more research to actually find out if that's actually, you know, it could be another photo anomaly. It could be more dust particles, you know, very weird dust particle acting very strangely uh, that's being caught on camera if it's really, really close, you know. But with all that being said, the things that with Occam's razor, which states in a nutshell, and even though it's not always typically the case, that the easiest explanation is usually the answer if it's something of a mystery if you know and and you just use that as a as part of your scientific method because i don't want to get all excited about something that isn't actually you know something that we're claiming to be if it's if it is if it's not a ghost i want to know i want to know see that evidence that tells me that it's something else if it is in fact something else i want to know it um That way it helps us weed out anything that, uh, that way it helps us weed, you know, whittle the evidence away to find, you know, the real stuff. But a lot of times what I figured out is that most people, um, who believe in this stuff or like to believe in this stuff and indulge in it are usually people who do have a lot going on in their lives. They have mental conditions, um myself included, you know, um, they want to, they want something to be special and close to them. And a lot of times it's just a lack of education to knowing what is there. And I've had to educate myself over time. And I, there's things that I've had to learn about in order to know what is, what is what. There have been many indications as to, there have been many things that I've experienced in my life, um, in which thinking back on it may, you know, I could have interpreted it as something being something like a ghost or something scary, but knowing that full well, that basically what was happening was that my mind was not, um, it was not adjusted just yet. Most of these things have been when I've have awakened out of my sleep. There's been times where I have hallucinated, could have swore that there was something moving in the corner in the very low light, you know, thought it was some, looked like a squirrel or, or a rat or something moving around, you know, but somebody else who really doesn't approach those things with the scientific method, method, they will immediately say, hey, that's a squirrel or that's a ghost, you know, um, there's been times where I've, I woke up and I could have swore I saw cobwebs all over me and in the doorway, but it was nothing more than a hallucination. 
because I just awoke out of a sleep state. Um, there's a, there's the, uh, the phenomena called the night hag, in which somebody, um, they awake, and this is a real phenomena, it's actually been documented and labeled as such, where people wake up, and their body hasn't fully adjusted yet, yet they're awake, but their body is still like in a sleep state. They, and they're, they're like their lower half of their body is paralyzed, May, especially mainly their legs. I don't know about their upper torso, but they feel like they're being held down by something. I had a roommate that this happened to, and I had not ever heard of the phenomena before, but he made me believe that our apartment was demon possessed. You know, thinking that his bedroom had a demon in it. But going and I found and I researched on the internet and to find out it's called the night hag, and all it is is just you you wake up out of your slumber and uh, your body hasn't physically adjusted and you feel like you're paralyzed and being held down. Well, that's just a physiological effect. Um, but uh, and even my brother, my brother had an experience where when he was three, he thought he saw what he thought was my mom in the doorway. And he said the face was really, really bright. And it, they were wearing like a long robe and, you know, it was standing in the doorway. And he said, he said, mom, is that you? You know, my mom says, no, I'm in the kitchen. And, um, but then he said he always thought, he always heard that he didn't, wasn't scared. He felt like peace. But he said he had heard that if they, if people would look away and then they look back, it'd be gone. And he did that, looked away and he, and he looked back and he would be gone. Now, as to what he actually experienced, I don't know. Um, you know, he was three years old, his mind probably still developing. He probably was hallucinating. That's a possibility. I'm not saying that he didn't see what he saw or, you know, that something was actually there that he saw. But the fact is, is that even if there was something there that, you know, if he did in fact, if he did in fact see something standing there, there's no way to really, you know, necessarily substantiate that claim. Ghosts and spirits, if they exist are elusive, and their nature is elusive, and we can't nail them down like we can the rest of the world. The rest of the world is in, in our experience every single day, where ghosts and things of that nature, if they do exist, are, we can't observe them the same way we observe the fact that my car is here every day, it sits out there in the parking lot, it's out there every single day. If I wake up and I find that it's gone, it wasn't my imagination that it was there. It just means that somebody took it, <laughs> you know, or I left it somewhere and didn't realize I got home or whatever, you know, or I was drunk and somebody brought me home. There's, there is a explanation to it. Um, but see, the thing is, and to sum up my point, Much like the way that people observe these things that are in fact hallucinations and thinking that it's something else is simply because they are not, they don't know about what they're observing. They don't know what a night hag is and that it's only a physiological effect of your body. To people who don't understand that, it's, it's, it's a demon, it's a spirit, it's something ethereal and, and scary. Where if you educate yourself, you become aware of what it is, and it's no longer a spirit or a demon or anything like that. You understand it as a physiological effect. Much like the way that, um, if I was to say the words, um, Klatu Barata Nikto, those three words. Now... I might be uh, further uneducated as to the origin of those words, but as far as I know, 
I know where those words were first uttered. They were not first uttered in Star Wars. Actually, I don't think they were actually mentioned in Star Wars themselves. But in the books and in the figurines, Barat or Klaatu, Barat and Nikto are three characters that were three of Jabba the Hutt's henchmen. And if I was to say that to somebody who's fairly young who's been into Star Wars, maybe my age, maybe even younger, you know, depends on who... They, if I said that, that's what they would say. It's like, oh, it's Jabba's, three of Jabba's henchmen. But I would further say, okay, that's true. But that's not where they came out first. And to my knowledge, this is where they came first. However, it could be some, they could have originated somewhere else too. I'm finding that stuff as well. They first originated in the movie, The, Earth, the Day the Earth Stood Still. In, and I, I haven't seen the new one with Tom Cruise. Was it Tom Cruise or was it Keanu Reeves? I'm not sure. But they did a remake of it here some years, a couple years ago. But in the original, it was like in 1930, 40s, something like that. That phrase, clat to barata nicto, was the code word to stop, to control and stop the, uh, the automaton that came out of the spaceship. He was the servant of the alien. And later on, <laughs> but then you got another one too. To somebody else, it also could it would be the code word that the magic the magic phrase that you would say to activate the Book of the Dead in Army of Darkness. So education as to what things are opens the door to understanding the world around you. But not understanding things only narrows it. So it's always important to never be afraid to test what you know because it could in fact be incorrect. And if what you do know is correct, then it will stand the test of science. It will stand the test of testing such things in a scientific manner. That's why it's very good and, and to also test what things that you believe, whether it be religion or science. Because if it's true, it will stand, it will, uh, stand the brunt of your test. Regardless, it, it will get you closer to the truth. So there's no point in believing something that is not true.